Okay, let's carry on looking into how the self exists in terms of um, depending upon its parts, the second level of dependent arising, the more slightly more subtle, more subtle, much more subtle, but not the subtlest. Mm -hmm. So basically what it's saying, okay, this, this first, very first one, the causes, is actually an argument from the Buddha with one of the prevailing views at the time. And so is the second one. Yeah, that there is a certain, from the very first one, that there is a self that is, doesn't depend upon causes, and that's absurd for the Buddha. Can't have such a thing. And there's a subtler level. There's a self that doesn't, that is partless, that doesn't have parts. That's absurd too. Speaking simply. <coughs> Mm. So this is not the subtlest meaning, but it's a really delicious little kind of analysis to do. Yeah. So what Buddha is saying is this. Because of this marigpa, this primordial e ignorance, this ego grasping deep in our bones, the root delusion... We believe totally, without question, instinctively, primordially, that there is, among all the other parts here, and we can see we're made up of parts, right? So one, Buddha, one presentation Buddha does is that we're made up of the five aggregates. Let's keep it simple and just say we're made up of body and mind. And then we can see among body and mind there are many, many, many parts of each of those, isn't there? <coughs> many, many bits and pieces. Yeah. So because of this ego grasping, we believe and act as if there is within here among all the thousands of parts, as my, pen, my friend Pende says, walking hand in hand with all the other thousands of parts, there is... There is a very special little part that kind of runs the show called I, which clear we believe that. Our language expresses it. I have a hand. Okay, one of, one of, there's many arguments, many logical arguments we need to use, like we do in, one needs to do in debate and in meditation, to break down this absurd misconception. And one of them is, it sounds so silly in the beginning, is that if you're going to point to any phenomenon, you've either got one phenomenon or there's more than one phenomenon. You can't have it both ways. Donc, Singular and plural, one and more than one. Et donc, il y, y a beaucoup d'arguments et qui vont nous permettre de débattre avec cette conception erronée. Et un de ces arguments, eh ben, c'est que si euh, on a et, euh, un phénomène devant nous, soit il y en a un, soit il y en a deux, et, et, ou il y en a plus d'un, mais il peut pas, ça ne peut pas être une autre possibilité. Mm. So the word dependent donc, quand on utilise le is mot like unbelievably crucial to understand in Buddhist philosophy, in, in order to understand emptiness. Là, c'est incroyablement crucial de comprendre ce mot dépendant afin de pouvoir comprendre... And one studies in great depth all the different ways in which dependence exists, various things exist independent upon certain things. For example, short can only exist independent upon long. Up can only exist independent upon down. It's one example of how things depend upon each other. One example, there are many. Et, et donc, et il est euh, incroyablement crucial de comprendre la signification de ce mot dépendant et il euh, y a beaucoup de façons de décrire cette dépendance et de, mm. de la définir. Mais par exemple, on va dire eh bien, que et le mot ou le concept de court ben, dépend de, du concept ou du mot de long ou, euh, 
You know, mother and child. For example, yeah. So here, let's look at dependence here in this particular way in relation to self and its parts. Mais si, et observons, regardons et, euh, la dépendance mm. et d'une manière particulière, mm. et la manière dont on va la regarder, c'est de parler du soi et de ses parties. So let's do a simple little kind of analysis here. Et donc euh, prenons et une simple analyse ici. Euh, And I will tell you, a, I'll make a statement. Donc je vais prononcer une affirmation. I have a table, a, a clock and a cup. <laughs> well, table and a clock is enough. A table and a clock is enough. I have a table and a clock. And speaking very simply, okay? So if you hear those words, you'll look to where the sound comes from, my mouth. And you'll use your eyes and very quickly look and see certain shapes and colors and then recognize that, that, that you know cup refers to one of them and table refers to another and that I refers to a third and you just say well being spoke the truth so that's a valid cognition at the simplest level. So now, look, how many phenomena did we mention? It was three, wasn't it? Table is one, cup is another, and I is a third. Now, the point is this, this, this is the point. If there are three phenomena, they have to be separate. If there's three, there have to be three things that are separate from each other. In this framework, <coughs> meaning they don't depend upon each other for their existence, for their function. So it's clear that the existence of a table which functions to hold things it doesn't need a cup to do that. The cup could break. The table doesn't collapse. The existence of a person called Robina does not depend upon a table's existence. Robina dies, table's fine. So a cup for its existence doesn't need a table. Okay, if we have it on the table, there's some relationship, we understand, but that's not the issue. For a cup to function, to hold my tea, it does not depend upon a table. Or a bina. Speaking very simply, so then we can establish there are three separate, in this case, thoroughly separate and thoroughly independent phenomena. Well, I'll make another statement. You know, I have a nose and a foot. Now, without analysis, you look over here and you'll quickly prove it's true. I have a nose and a foot. There it is, quickly, look, see. It's not, not complicated. Now, how many phenomena did I mention? It's pretty clear I mentioned three, didn't I? Phenomena are like nouns, okay, a noun, or a pronoun or a noun. They're phenomena. You know, Buddha... Okay, one interesting point. Okay, say that first. It's interesting the way that they talk about how the mind cognizes phenomena, cognizes things, cognizes, cognizes. Cognizes, no, just cognizes. It's interesting how the mind cognizes. It always has to have an object. Object not in the sense of a physical thing. Object in the sense of being something the subject called mind cognizes. Objet dans le sens d'être quelque chose que le sujet, donc le sujet yeah. appelé esprit, connaît. So mind is always, so whatever level of mind, whatever kind of mind, eye consciousness, anger, love, subtle consciousness, they always, they, it's, each moment of con cognition has its own specific phenomenon that it cognizes. Donc, et quelle que soit la partie de l'esprit, qu'il s'agisse de la conscience visuelle ou de l'amour ou de la colère ou de la conscience plus subtile, Eh ben, chaque moment de conscience et doit avoir un objet qu'elle connaît. So you can sort of say that mind cognizes nouns. 
You heard me, I promise. Uh, yes. Ma'am. You did hear it. Say it exactly as I said. No, the beginning I, I missed. Yeah. Okay. Mind cognizes nouns. So, you could say, mind cognizes nouns. Yeah, isn't it? Oui. So, uh, eye consciousness so, la cognizes blue. Le bleu. You know, eye consciousness cognizes yellow. La you know, jaune. mental consciousness cognizes the presence of cup. La la okay, du this is a crucial thing to understand, this point about how cogn phenomena are cognized by mind. Mind has an object. Donc, Each state of mind has its own object. Okay, so in this case... Donc, okay, no, forget that. That was just one extra point to take in. Bon, well, okay, mais... so now, là, let's look at... Let's do the analysis of this other statement, I have a nose and a hand. They have the three phenomena I mentioned, don't they? Donc, three. Trois Nose is one noun. Donc, le nez, un nom. Foot is another noun, Donc, or whatever I said, hand or whatever. Hand, main, hand, hand, main, main, hand. Main, main, and main, what's the third main, noun? It's a pronoun. Main, That's called me, isn't it? Le I. Pronom, le je. So from the point of view of simply various phenomena existing, I is one of those phenomena. Foot is another phenomenon. Or a noun, at least, and then and then the third phenomenon is, is nose, isn't it? That's three things, right? Would you agree? Three things. Donc, uh, sous cet angle et uh, d'avoir là la présence de plusieurs phénomènes, et eh ben, est-ce que vous seriez d'accord pour dire que là, on a mentionné trois phénomènes différents, donc le jeu qui est un nom, qui est un phénomène, euh, la main qui en est un autre, et le. Et, uh, le so let's point out, like before. Ou le nez. Ouais. Like before, let's point out three phenomena. Donc, et montrons, et quels sont ces trois phénomènes Well, there's the hand. Donc, là, la main. Cut it off. Si, et vous la en Nose is not offended. Nose can still blow snot. Si, si vous la main, et le nez de son côté, ça pas In that sens. sense, they don't depend upon each other for their functioning, for their existence. Cut the nose off. Si vous le nez, Hand is not affected. La, la main va pas être affectée. So what about the third phenomenon? Mais, passe pour le phénomène? I. Le jeu. Now, we believe that there is an I that is separate, that doesn't depend upon, which means it's separate, from a nose and the hand. We believe it's a little mini me in there, the owner. We talk like this. We feel this way and we believe without any analysis and without any proof and have done so for eons. Et donc, nous croyons et qu'il y a un mini-jeu qui est là quelque part et euh, qui est euh, séparé euh, du nez euh, et de la main, et, et nous croyons à cela, et nous le, ça fait en fait des éons qu'on croit. So here's one point to prove that there can't be. Et, et donc, voici et une idée euh, qui va vous prouver que ce n'est pas possible. Like I said, if they're independent and separate, in the case of these, the, the cup and the table and the eye, they're all separate, three separate phenomena. Within the framework of three phenomena, they're separate and don't depend upon each other for their function, so therefore we can point out three, no problem. Et donc, comme je l'ai dit, et si nous pouvons et montrer devant nous trois phénomènes séparés, comme dans le cas de la table, la tasse et, mm. et le jeu, donc on peut passer. Mais ici, ils sont séparés. Sounds the same. Bon, ici et dans l'exemple. I have a nose and a hand. Ça, ça semble être identique à ce premier exemple. Three exemple, things. Je, je ai un nez yeah. et une main. So now, if, if there were. A separate eye that doesn't depend upon the other bits and pieces. Well, then, if there if there were, which is independent, separate, that doesn't depend upon noses and hands, which is how we feel. Then, when your hand gets hurt, why would if you if you smash me in the hand? Why would I cry and say, "Stop it! You're hurting me"? You say, "Don't be silly, Rabin. I'm not hurting you. I'm hurting your hand." And if there were a 
separate eye there that doesn't have a relationship with the hand, like the table and the cup, the table stays intact and has no problem. Doesn't, it doesn't weep when the, when the cup breaks. It doesn't collapse. It stays intact. So if there is a separate eye, it wouldn't be upset at all. It'd watch the poor old hand suffering and think, poor hand, I'm so sorry, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> But we know it's not like that. We in fact do say, you hurt me, I am in pain. So what is that telling us? That there is an eye, but not independent of the hand and the nose. You can't isolate it. You can't point it out. As Lama Zopa says, when you look at the other argument about the eye, another argument, which has to, another discussion which we'll go into, how the label eye cannot be the base of the label, which is the parts. Et comme le dit la Mazopa, donc quand vous et considérez l'autre argument, et on en parlera plus tard, et, mais qui est que, eh bien, il ne peut pas y avoir un, un jeu qui soit séparé euh, de, de sa base, on ne peut pas mettre le label. You can de... say, you can't, so the I, I, donc, the, okay, the other argument we have, just this one, the other argument we tend to have is, well, all of it's me. Bon, l'autre argument qu'on a tendance à avoir, c'est que tout ceci... We sera... either feel there's a separate me, there's the owner, So, donc, soit on ressent qu'il y a un jeu séparé qui serait in there somewhere, you know, tout le reste, donc qui serait là, hiding in there, running everything, se cachant quelque part à l'intérieur et qui régirait toute l'histoire. Or, well, it's all of me. Ou alors, on va penser au so this other analysis, ce jeu, ben, c'est yeah, this other analysis, donc, dans cette autre analyse, is the basis, et, which is the parts, et donc, c'est la, la base qui can't be the eye. La, la base qui est les parties, en fait, le eye is a label. That we project onto the bits and pieces. So they are they are different. But they're not independent. There's another way. Of, it's a more subtle point. They are different. But they're not independent. They can't be. Look at the cup. My cup has a base. Fact. So we think we're going to find a thing called a cup and a thing called a base. Our language says that. My cup, one phenomenon, has a base, another phenomenon. Take the base away. No cup. So cup does depend upon its base. But you can't separate them. Same here. <coughs> But on the one hand, I is not a separate phenomenon that owns and runs the pieces. <coughs> Nor is I oneness with the pieces, the same as the pieces. No, isn't. But it doesn't mean. So this is the depending on a rising view of of that there, there's not. It's not that there's not a cup. It's not that there's not an eye. But you, as long as okay, as long as that is when we've understood this emptiness, this absence of an intrinsic separate eye or absence of an intrinsic separate cup, when we realize emptiness. Et donc, comme le dit la Mazopa, quand nous aurons réalisé et, euh, cette absence et d'un soi et, existant de manière intrinsèque et euh, séparé ou d'une tasse existant de manière We're not understanding that there's no I, oh, there's no I, I might as well kill myself. Et donc, ben, ce ne sera pas la compréhension, ça, ça n'aura rien à voir avec le fait de dire, ah, oh, il n'y a pas de jeu, et donc... But ben, there's ben, no ben, independent ben, I, ben, there's no independent ben, I. Ben, So when we re- when we realize that, and Rinpoche says it's as if there is no I. But depend on arising, there is an I, but it's so subtle. It's as if it is not existing. So right now. We hear no I. There is an I. Emptiness, dependent arising. Extreme views. We hear wrong views. 
de vue extrême. Complete, mis erronée, complete mistake. Et erreur totale, complète. So clearly, we need to think about this. Donc, bon, il est clair qu'il nous faut penser et réfléchir à tout ça. So, full stop, turn the page, new chapter. Donc, et point final, et tourner la page, nouveau chapitre. Now let's look at this word emptiness, which completely confuses us. Maintenant, et regardons ce mot vacuité qui nous rend complètement confus. Remember I said before that mind cognizes phenomena. Donc, on, on a nouns and nouns, things. L'esprit connaît des phénomènes, des noms, mm. des choses. So, let's look at this word in general in our daily life. Empty, Donc, emptiness, empty. Regardons ce mot en général dans notre vie quotidienne. Quand on dit vide. We're very familiar with the concept. Donc, on est très familier avec ce concept. As just in a general sense. Et comme on l'a dit, en un sens... I'll pick up my cup and go, Donc, oh! What did I just notice in my cup? Si je prends ma tasse et que je dis, oh! I noticed that there's no, there's no tea in my cup. So why did I get a surprise? Because I'm expecting tea. Well, hot water, actually, hot water. I'm expecting it. Yeah. If you look in the drawer for your car keys as you rush out the door to, to rush off to work late and you open the drawer, you go, oh, oh, my God. You just discovered the thing you thought was there isn't. Et donc, si vous ouvrez euh, le tiroir près de la porte d'entrée parce que vous êtes en train de vous dépêcher, vous êtes en retard pour aller au travail, et que vous ouvrez le tiroir et que oh, les clés sont pas là. You look in your bank account expecting 5,000 euros because you want to come on pilgrimage with me next 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 February actually, and you all ready to buy your ticket and you look in the bank account and put your password in and you see zero written. You won't just say, oh well, no euros. Look at the shock of your life. Where's my oh my God, no euros. What happened to my euros, my precious 5,000 euros? You'll say. Et, et si euh, vous regardez votre compte en banque euh, en ligne et que vous attendez à avoir 5000 euros et que, oh, surprise, et 0 euros et que vous, êtes, euh, vous regardiez parce que vous vouliez euh, vous euh, payer le pèlerinage avec moi en février. In other words, dire, when we. Et yeah. vous vous dire, oh, pas d'euros. We're familiar et with this idea. We're familiar with the idea that something we expect to be there isn't. Donc, et on est bien familier, ça, on connaît bien cette euh, idée yeah. de avoir quelque chose qu'on attend qui soit là et qui n'y est pas. So we'll just go, where are my 5,000 euros? Et, et donc là, on va se dire, où sont mes 5,000 euros? Oh my God, no tea. Oh mon Dieu, pas de thé. We'll say like that. On va dire ça. So va turn dire. those objects of our cognition into nouns. Et donc, si vous devez et, euh, et retourner, formuler ces objets de cognition et en faire des noms, If there is hot water in my cup, si il y a de chaude dans ma tasse, then my eye consciousness alors, ma visuelle, will cognize sh certain shape. And straight away, my mental consciousness will, cognize, will label it hot water. Et, et donc, ma va yeah. le label so, cog autre. eye consciousness, donc, visuelle, subject, sujet, object, et water. Well, you know, we, well, the mental conscious con uh, uh, cognizes water, right? Donc, la qui peut... So water is a phenomenon donc, est un that does exist in my cup. Dans ma tasse. And my mind cognizes it. Ce Very simple. We do that. We live our lives like this. On vit notre vie ainsi. My eye looks over here. Mon oeil par là. And I'll cognize the color blue. Et connais, je connais la bleue. So the mind is the subject. Et donc, est le sujet. And it cognizes a certain phenomenon. Et qui va connaître that we can all agree validly in our, in our culture that is called blue. So my mind is cognizing a phenomenon called blue. Et donc, mon un blue. If there is 5,000 euros in your bank, y a 5 000 euros sur votre compte your mind, votre esprit, eye consciousness sees those shapes and the numbers, you know. Visuelle, voilà, les de ces Mental shapes. consciousness You know, knowing numbers then deduces it's called 5,000 euros. Votre conscience mentale, ben, parce qu'elle connaît les chiffres et en déduit... So that is the object of your cognition. Donc, et voilà l'objet de votre cognition. We, we live our lives like this all the time. Donc, on vit notre vie ainsi tout le temps. So what's the phenomenon called... Donc, quel nom a ce phénomène... When the tea is not there. Et quel nom on va donner quand il n'y a pas de thé là. And this is a specific phenomenon... That only will exist for a person who expects hot water, not tea, hot water, hot water. Yeah. So if I expect hot water, if there is no hot water there, we will say, ah, no hot water. We'll turn that into a noun. Turn that into a phenomenon. It's easy. Absence of tea.
Emptiness of tea. Okay, it's like an abstract phenomenon. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a negative number. Bon. You can't count bon. minus two. You understand? C'est un phénomène uh, abstrait en fait. C'est c'est comme un chiffre, un nombre négatif. Vous pouvez pas compter moins deux. But ça. understanding this Mais, uh, la de cela is necessary for us to understand the meaning of emptiness. Pour la so de here. Donc ici, we're simply referring to something simple, emptiness of tea, nous hot water tea. Simple, hein, Now, tea could exist. So that's a simple example. 5,000 euros could exist. Keys could exist. But the emptiness, the emptiness that Buddha is referring to is a way more subtle one. What we have to recognize is the emptiness of an intrinsic eye. So our trouble here is we, we know what water, we know what tea is. We know what euros are. We know what keys are. So it's easy to understand the concept. But there's two difficulties here. We don't know what intrinsic eye means. And then we hear that there isn't one. And then we hear we have to realize the emptiness of one of them. It's like double trouble, double confusion. We're just like lost. What are you talking about? So, so again, okay, that's also interesting. This is a crucial point. You don't walk into the crockery shop. What do you call it in France? The crockery. Buy crockery. Or you buy crockery. This is called crockery. Right? You don't walk in and, and say, Mummy, all the cups are empty. You don't say that, do you? They are empty of tea. But no one expects tea to be in the cups in the, in the shop. If you, don't, if, if you don't expect keys in that drawer, you won't see the emptiness of keys. You know, we could say, oh, there's no elephant in the room. It's true. So we could say that does exist in this room the absence of an elephant. But who cares? No one thought there was in the first place. They don't make it complicated. <laughs> so here what we're saying is this emptiness of something the Buddha is referring to is the absence of something that you thought was there. Are we communicating so far? Okay. So we have to realize that it ain't there. And unlike tea and keys and euros, an independent eye, an inherent eye, an eye that doesn't exist and depends upon anything, an eye that exists from its own side, an eye that exists naturally, all synonyms, that kind of phenomenon has never exist, doesn't exist, and could never exist. It's a really dramatic, radical absence. So why is Buddha telling us about it? Because we think there's one. So we have to realize there isn't one. Are we communicating so far? Just the usage of the words, you know, it's necessary. So again, full stop, new chapter, not quite, no, new paragraph, not quite, a new section, not quite a new chapter. New section now. Okay. The commonest mistake we make when we hear the lamas, they say lama zopa in his, his language, from the side of the cup, there's not one atom of anything there that makes it a cup. Not one atom. 
It's coming from the mind. This is, this is the subtlest meaning, merely labeled, merely labeled, merely labeled. No, no, forget the merely labeled, forget the merely labeled, then keep it to the parts one, which is more, more gross. So I believe there's an I in there somewhere, among all the parts, right? So a really good, like a, a, a good like meditation to do, like a logical analysis, is start throwing or deconstructing this package. Chucking out all the bits and pieces of the body. And you'll have quite a few piles. Tucking out all the parts of the mind. You know, gross mind, subtle mind, negative mind, positive mind, all the states of mind. They are the components of an eye. But we're, we're searching among all those bits and pieces. We're sort of searching for this little piece called I that kind of seems to be hiding in there. Well, Buddha says guaranteed. When you keep searching, within the framework of the of the package called I, you will find parts. Hands, knee, ears, noses, atoms, pipi, caca, love, anger, the thousand millions of bits and pieces that all constructed beautifully together, like IKEA, will make a, will turn into an eye. So when we throw out, you mentioned IKEA way back. That was the end, the beginning. But you said it earlier. No, no, I said it earlier. But I said it at the end. I said it again. Earlier. No. At the end. Well done. Okay. Are we communicating so far? Yes. So okay. So naturally we think, oh, good. I'm going to look for this eye. You know. This eye that's separate from the other parts. I'm sure I recognise it. Well, guaranteed. When you've chucked out all the bits, there won't be a bit called an eye. So now the nihilistic. Conclusion from that is. Oh well, there's no I. I might as well kill myself. It's not like that, as His Holiness said. That's nihilism, and that's the commonest misunderstanding of emptiness. Wrong. That's falling into the abyss of the great mistake. Okay, if you think of you're looking for something, you're looking for the intrinsic eye. And even forget what you even think an intrinsic eye is, never mind. Sorry. Oh, no, I have to say it all again. Sorry. <laughs> it would be so much better if I spoke French, isn't it? I know, but I'm just so stubborn and lazy. I'm so sorry. I have to give Francois a job, you see. <laughs> I forget what I said. If they, okay, if we're looking for intrinsic, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, let's look at the dollars in the bank, the euros. You're, you're searching the bank. You're going to open the bank account, and you're convinced. You're convinced that there is five thousand euros there. You know, you've put them there. You've worked for them. You believe it. You're all excited. You can't wait to see those numbers in the bank account. So let's say someone stolen your entire five thousand euros. So that means there is zero left, isn't it? So for this analogy here, zero is nihilism. There are no euros. That is nihilism. So now listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. You ask me to look in your bank. And just check for me, Rubina, my 5,000 euros. You know, I want to get them out. No, sorry. I, no, sorry. I don't know there's anything. I, don't, I have no idea what's there. You just say, please check my bank account and tell me what's there. And I have no expectation. This is a crucial point. I have no expectation. Okay. 
So I will see that I will. In fact, this case, I will see there's no euros, won't I? I'll see a zero, and I know it means zero euros. So the object of my cognition is called zero euros, right? And this, it's true, there are no euros. So now, if you look in the bank, you will see the zero. You will see, your eyes will see that shape. But what mental, but what mental construct will your mind burst out your mouth? You won't you will see a zero and then you'll do a quick logical analysis. Holy mother of God, that means my 5,000 euros has disappeared. Where's my 5,000 euros? You will say. Won't you? So what the object you're cognizing is not, oh, well, no zero, no euros. The object you are cognizing is a rich, powerful cognition, object, object, called the absence of 5,000 euros. So they're completely different phenomena, aren't they? I cognize zero. You cognize emptiness of 5,000. So simple, the thing that you cognize, the realization, which is not a comfortable realization, <coughs> that you have, is not that there's no, zero, no euros in your bank, that there's the absence of your presence precious 5,000 euros. It is clear they're not the same phenomenon. So when you're searching for this independent eye, having done years and years of study and purification and debate and analysis and meditation and you're in the depth of your subtle meditation and you're, and you're doing your analysis of dependent arising and then the insight is triggered... Et donc, après avoir fait eh bien, des années euh, d'études philosophiques euh, sur ce sujet, et puis euh, des années de débat et de purification, pratique de purification, and you see for the first time, et, euh, au final, et vous êtes dans cette méditation, direct, in, direct cognition, et, subtil, et que pour la première fois, vous avez une cognition directe, direct non conceptual, une, une, co une cognition directe non conceptual, insight into, une recognition of, une reconnaissance de the fact de ce fait of the absence of that fantasy I. De de ce jeu that is not seeing ah, oh, no I. Completely different phenomenon. So it is not nihilism. Then they say, <coughs> once you've seen the absence of the fantasy, the 5,000 euros, the keys, the tea, I mean, these are simple examples. Or here, the real one of the, of the um, once you've seen the absence of the eye that you thought was there. Again, repeat. Donc là, je répète, you don't see, you don't cognize no I. Vous pas voir, alors, pas you, you cognize a very delicious phenomenon called the emptiness of an inherent I. Once you realize that, Une fois que vous avez ça, then you realize what they call subtle dependent arising. Et alors vous ce la that there is an eye, y a un jeu, but so subtle, mais si subtil, it's, as if, it's as if it doesn't exist. Comme si pas. Merely labeled eye. Il est imputé, ce jeu. That's the way of presenting it. Ça, so do you have any questions for me before we have lunch? Okay, we'll do one more. We'll do uh, no, full stop, change a uh, new, new chapter. Another, we'll do a little kind of an, a workshop, an analysis now to prove, at least the parts one, to prove not only will you not find one, but you don't need one.
Okay? Well, it's a conspiracy theory to think there's an eye running the show. It's a load of nonsense. Et donc, point final et nouveau chapitre. Et là, maintenant, on va faire une petite analyse et avec les, le, le cas des parties. Et donc, vous trouvez, et non seulement que vous n'allez pas en trouver un, mais que vous n'en avez pas besoin. Et que, en fait, c'est un peu comme une théorie du complot et qu'on n'en a pas besoin. So, you know, a simple example. I'm, um, you know, just a simple example. I use the same one every time. I'm holding, I'm holding a cup in my right hand. Donc, un exemple simple, j'utilise toujours le même, et je tiens dans ma main droite une tasse. So, because we, you know, are familiar with this action, we've, we've been doing it all our life, we can do it in a second, can't we? Donc, parce que nous sommes très familiers avec cette action, on l'a fait toute notre vie, donc on peut le faire en une seconde. Donc, But let's say I've forgotten how to do it. Mais disons que moi, j'ai oublié comment... Faire you know, I had a stroke or something, and I've lost my memory, and I've got to start learning again. Une tasse en ma main, disons que j'ai eu un AVC, j'ai perdu la mémoire, il faut que j'apprenne de nouveau. I've got an awful lot of work, don't I? Do an awful lot of work. So, okay. So, what I have to learn to do is try and identify all the different bits and pieces in my body for a start that are going to be involved, that are involved, that are necessary to accomplish the action of holding a cup in my right hand. There's going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces. Again, talk about IKEA that I've got to put together and and and, and coordinate to make the action happen. We agree with that. We understand that. Que vais-je devoir apprendre Et euh, ben c'est de nouveau apprendre déjà pour le corps. Hein, quels sont les milliers de parties, de morceaux, de pièces du corps hein, qui vont être impliquées, qui vont devoir se coordonner, bien se coordonner, pour que je puisse arriver au final et à, à tenir la tasse dans mm. ma main. Donc là, parlez-moi d'Ikea, mais là, c'est des milliers de pièces et de parties qui vont. So, you know, I've got to learn to know how, how to put the thumb. Donc, il me faut à then there's the index finger, then the pinky, and the middle one. Ensuite, I mean, just a, a la that alone, so much work and so much awareness of all the different pieces that, that you know, if you analyze, and it's okay, if you had to analyze all the pieces involved, like a long list for me, like a Kia, you'd have thousands. There'd be joints, ligaments, muscles, thumb, this, that, this one, palm, wrist, something. Elbow. There's all these bits and pieces. I mean, this would be an incredibly subtle analysis, wouldn't it? And there'd be hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces. That's dependent arising of parts. Looking into the thing called a body. Et donc, et uh, si vous deviez analyser uh, les centaines ou les milliers de morceaux et de pièces du corps hein, qui sont uh, impliqués et dans le fait de tenir une tasse, hein, et ben là, vous allez commencer par le le pouce. Mais il y a à l'intérieur, il y a les ligaments, il y a les muscles. Et de, te, de, de, de tous les doigts, la phalange, le poignet, le coude. Et donc, ces centaines, ces milliers de pièces. Donc, euh, oubliez la même Ikea, là, c'est des centaines ou des milliers qui vont être impliqués si vous faites cette analyse subtile. There's a lot of bits and pieces, right? Beaucoup de morceaux et de pièces. And they're all got, in the end, once you've accomplished it, they're all doing their job. Et donc, Perfectly. Au, au final, une fois que vous aurez accompli cela, bon, ben, tous mm. ces morceaux et ces pièces vont parfaitement faire leur travail. So this depends on arising. Of You know, uh, uh, forget all that. We we'll just observe those many bits and pieces that all have to work together to accomplish that action. Donc, y a de nombreux morceaux et pièces qui doivent tout travailler ensemble pour accomplir. And think about it. The thumb doesn't argue with the little finger and say, "Go away, you're doing my job." They all do their job beautifully, you know. Et réfléchissez-y, hein. Mais le le pouce ne va pas et débattre, discuter avec le petit doigt en disant et va-t'en et ne viens pas faire mon travail. Non, ils travaillent tous parfaitement harmonieusement et bien coordonnés. Now, now, what's the what's the second component? Without which, why would you bother? It's called a mind. If this is a dead body, don't bother. You're wasting time. Bon, si ça juste avec un arbre, évidemment, il n'y a pas besoin de perdre son temps. Mais dans notre cas, eh bien, la deuxième composante, c'est l'esprit. So let's look at the parts of the mind involved in this job. Et donc, observons maintenant les parties de l'esprit qui sont impliquées dans ce travail. Clearly, this is the main player. Et donc, là, il est clair que c'est l'acteur. Well, I've got to have ear consciousness so I can hear your instructions. Et donc, j'ai d'abord la conscience auditive pour que je puisse entendre des instructions. Eye consciousness so I can see what the hell's going on. La conscience visuelle pour que je vois ce qui se passe. Tactile consciousness is hugely important. La conscience tactile, extrêmement importante, là. Don't need tongue. Dans cette action. Don't need nose. Pas besoin de la langue ni du nez, mais... 
Is this clear? That's just your senses. Now you've got your mental consciousness. And mostly here, it's not going to be negative or positive states of mind that are involved. It's mostly going to be the mechanics. Whether it's intention, attention, concentration, mindfulness, discrimination, alertness. There's many parts of our mind. All of which, because we've trained ourselves, all work beautifully together to do all the usual ridiculous actions that we do, like eat cake, have sex, go to the toilet, etc. Not to mention doing virtuous actions. Et euh, manger euh, du euh, gâteau, euh, avoir un rapport sexuel, aller aux toilettes, euh, quoi que ce soit. All have to be doing their job. Donc, et All have to be working travail. nicely, doing their job, doing their function, working hand in hand with the bits and pieces of the body. Et, et, et donc faire bien leur travail, joliment, bien coordonné, et marchant main dans la main avec toutes ces autres parties du corps. We understand this. We understand this. On comprend bien ça. So again, repeat. In order for me to accomplish a simple action like hold a cup in my right hand, as far as the eye is concerned, forget the cup, there are thousands of parts, bits and pieces, that make up what's called eye, that make up what's called eye, that all work beautifully together to accomplish the action. It's a long way of breaking it all down. We get it. And each part will do its proper job nice. If it's all working together, they'll all work beautifully. They'll all be harmonious. They'll all do their part nicely. Et donc, si tout fonctionne bien, ben chacune des parties, et tout va se passer de manière très harmonieuse, et chacune des parties... Ben uh, we, so, we, imagine we've made that definitive description. We've put it down a definitive list of all the bits and pieces. Donc, imaginons que nous soyons arrivés à faire la liste, mais vraiment définitive, so de now, tous les morceaux et les parties now the point of this. qui sont impliqués dans la The liste. question. Maintenant, et l'idée est la suivante. La question à se poser... What question, job is job left over... Reste-t-il that's missing, that unless it's there, the job won't get done. What is the job left over for this little precious pauvre petit moi? Any suggestions? Whatever you like. Any suggestions? Hmm. Go on. Oh, yeah, see, so, okay, we know that. <laughs> That's Buddha's view. We get that, but we haven't realized it yet. But it's good to see that. But what do we think? The first instinct is because the words express it and the feelings express it. The, the job of the little eye in there is to run the show. I intend. I concentrate. I hold. I think. So we assume when we say I think there's, a, there's an object, a referent object that exists that the I refers to. Donc, well, there ain't. Quand, quand on dit je, je pense, eh bien, ça sous-entend euh, qu'il y a et, euh, un, un objet. There's not an independent I. Et donc, il y a un jeu qui est indépendant de cet objet. Mais il n'y a pas de jeu indépendant. Don't need one. Vous n'en avez pas besoin d'un jeu indépendant. This is the same philosophy as a creator. So there has to be a boss controlling everything. Well, the I is the same concept. It's this, you know, boss that runs all the bits. That the Greeks call it an essence. The Hindus call it an Atman. You know, the Christians call it a soul. Jung and the rest of the mob call it an eye, an ego, whatever you like. Yeah. Buddha's done his analysis. 
you won't find a separate piece called that. And the belief in that is the source of all hell realms, all god realms, all formless realms, all four realms, all humans, all anti-gods, all animals and all spirits and all Buddhahood. No, sorry, and the absence of that, all the dramas, are all, there was, forget the Buddhahood, that was a mistake. It's the, the cause of all the suffering, all the dramas for eons of lifetimes is the belief in this fantasy eye. Et que ben, la croyance en ce jeu imaginaire est la cause de tous les enfers, de tous les euh, royaumes, des animaux, des humains, des dieux, des demi-dieux, du royaume du forme, du sans-forme, de tout ça. So it's good to understand intellectually first. It helps. And then we can learn to know the right words to think so, with the pe- so we can get the experience to come from it in si meditation. So any questions about all of this? Since this morning at 9.30. Where? Yeah, where? Yeah, where? Yes, darling. Go. Mm-hmm. Um, two things. Okay. The first one, coming back to the uh, interdependency of uh, the hands, the nose, and the eye. Uh, can we say that... Uh, because you said if you cut the hand, the nose is still here and the eye is still here. But if you cut the eye, the hand... If you do what? If you cut the eye... Yeah, but we're trying to show there's no eye. Where is this eye that you're cutting? No, at the big... Okay, fix... Okay. Okay. Okay, so keep saying, or say it in a different way. Go on. Go on. No, I just wanted to say, to prove the the dependency of everything. The independency, or the the dependency. The dependency. Of the eye, depending on... The existence of the eye, depending upon the nose and the hand. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. (laughs) Yes. Okay, go on. Yeah. If I cut the eye, the hand... The hand and the nose doesn't exist, don't exist. Well, the, that's right, because if there's no eye, there's no hand yeah. and there's no nose. We can say that. So what's the point you're saying? No, no. I just wanted to, to, to know if we could say that as well. That's it. But then we're not... Then, but we could, but there's nothing to discuss then. There's no discussion. No, no discussion. It was just... No, I know, but it's like, that's like saying if there's no... If, there's, if we take cup away, then there's no base and there's no, there's no handle. It's true, but why, there's nothing to talk about. We wouldn't even be having a discussion. So there's no point in saying it. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? But it's a, it's a way to help the mind, yeah, I suppose what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a confirmation. Like, but the second point is, who is uh, who knows that there is an eye? What knows that there is an eye and you that do. there is? You do. Who is you? That's the point. As we're discussing it, we just proved it before by saying yeah. there's no inherent eye. There is an eye, but not inherent. That's all. It's the merely labelled eye. The merely labelled eye. Which is so subtle, it's as if it doesn't exist. As Lama Zopa says. So conventionally speaking, you realise that there is no intrinsic eye. Of course you do. It's not your chair or your jumper or your nose that realises it. Who is you? No, sorry, sorry. I just said it before. We just proved it, and that's what takes time. The eye that does exist is a merely labelled eye. But it's so subtle as if it doesn't exist. That's what Lama Zopa puts in. But let's not worry about that. I'm holding a cup. It's, no, forget that. I'm holding a cup. It's true, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? It's a simple statement of truth without analysis. So let's analyse it to maybe answer your question. Let's analyse it. Which is what we just did before. Which part of I? I is a label we give for the bits and pieces. So it's the bits and pieces that do the work. It's the same here. So which part of you realises emptiness is called your mind, petal? And which part of your mind realizes emptiness is it's, it's the wisdom that counteracts ignorance. 
Parce que quelle, quelle partie de jeu tient cette tasse Eh bien, on l'a dit tout à l'heure, c'est tous les morceaux et les pièces de, 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 qui constituent ce jeu qui, qui tiennent cette tasse. Et donc, quand on dit « je réalise la vacuité », qu'est-ce qui réalise la vacuité eh ben, Quelle partie du « je » réalise la vacuité ben, C'est l'esprit qui réalise la vacuité. Quelle partie de l'esprit réalise la vacuité eh ben, C'est la sagesse. The specific wisdom that counteracts exactly ego grasping. Et cette sagesse spécifique qui contre la saisie d'ego, ben, c'est elle qui Supported by intention, attention, concentration, all the other bits and pieces of the mind, like the holding the cup. Mais cette sagesse qui est soutenue par toutes ces autres parties de l'esprit, mm. que sont l'attention, la concentration, la vigilance... Because when we say, well, who realizes it, parce que quand on pose la question qui réalise The simple first answer is I realize it. La vacuité, bon, et, la, et bien la, la réponse la plus simple qui va nous venir instinctivement, c'est je réalise la And then of course you just say well who's I? Mais What's the I? On va poser la question mais c'est qui ce well, I is the label we give to the bits and pieces. Et bien le je c'est le label qu'on donne et l'imputation. So it's a broad truth that I'm holding a cup. It's a broad truth. Et donc c'est une vérité on pourrait dire générale de dire que But specifics. Mais si on est Are the bits and pieces? Same with, so our, our problem, and you're not, I'm not suggesting you're saying this, but our problem is, you know, I'm watching my breath, I'm meditating. You know, so how can I watch I meditating? We kind of go crazy, you know. Then we talk about this witness. Et donc, on va parler no, de there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Non, y a rien this de is a label we've made up. C'est un label et c'est qu'on a inventé. So it's really, this is why the Tibetans talk this way. And it's really powerful that you start identifying which pieces of your mind do the work. Et c'est pour ça que les Tibétains parlent ainsi et c'est très puissant et, et essayer d'identifier quelle partie de ton esprit. We say, oh, I'm angry. Parce que on va dire, je I'm meditating. Je médite. I'm depressed. Je suis déprimé. Well, get the eye out of the way. Mais bon, sortez le jeu des There's depression in there. There's anger. There's meditation. This idea of the eyes kind of looms large and kind of crushes everything. It gets in the way. Lama Zabramache, who was recognized when he was a very little boy, is the reincarnation of this great Nyingma yogi up in the mountains. You know, the Sher he's a Sherpa. Et, et donc, Lamazo Paripoché, quand il a été euh, reconnu, euh, il était tout petit euh, garçon, comme la réincarnation de ce grand yogi Nigma, donc euh, là-haut dans les montagnes, les, les Sherpas d'origine. So, he, when he was formally recognized, he was sent off to the mountains, a few hours away from where he was from, he lived in this monastery or something. Et donc, quand il a été reconnu... Or lived in a house with a, a, a person, I think they called him his manager, he was like his... Like a person who was handed over to you to take care of him, a monk, I think, I'm not sure. So Rinpoche tells a story years later about one event when he was about eight or something. It was a big river. And this is about maybe 1952 or something. Donc, ça être vers 1952, mm. ou and it's a big river, and across the other side, there's these strange-looking people. You know, with pale skin, donc, avait la peau pale, pale colored eyes, et avait des, des yeux clairs, straw colored hair. Et des, des blonds. Sounds like Swedes. Bon, on sent que des <laughs> well, white people in general. Bon, en tout cas, des He'd never seen white people before. Lui, il avait vu de so he wanted to meet them. Et donc, il a les Maybe he was kind of he had a sense he'd be, you know, meet a whole mob of them later. So he was determined to go. En tout cas, il était à and, he, and he don't go empty handed, so he had his bowl of potatoes. And there are these really de... rickety kind of unsafe bridges up there. They kind of, they're made of metal or even rope sometimes, and they wobbled, you know, all these metal ones when, when we walked up there. Et, et donc, il a pris avec lui un, un bol de patates c'est tout ce qu'il avait et, et donc il a dû traverser au-dessus de la rivière ce pont vous savez il y a ces ponts qu'on traverse à, à the rivière, are, en, en métal yeah. et qui sont vraiment and the rivers are quite intense et puis les, les rivières là-bas yeah. ça peut être des torrents so anyway he fell in the water 
And they don't teach them drowning, they don't teach them swimming up there. <laughs> and he's eight or something, eight. And that's how he told the story. He said, oh, the head kept coming to the surface for air. Not my head, the head. La tête n'arrêtait pas de remonter vers la surface pour essayer de, de respirer. Et donc il dit pas ma tête, il dit la tête. And he saw his manager having a panic attack, running up and down the bank trying to save him. Et donc il raconte l'histoire et il dit euh, qu'il voyait son manager qui était sur les berges de la rivière et qui courait dans un sens et dans l'autre en essayant de vouloir le sauver. Mais... And then, uh, then he said. Et ensuite, raconte-t-il. Oh, the thought occurred to me. La pensée m'est survenue. Oh. Ah. <laughs> The thought occurred to me. La the person known as the Lao Lama is about to die. La qui est connu comme étant le Lama de la Mudo et va you see, the label's not the base. Et donc, là, le label pas la base. The Lao Lama is the label. Le, le, le Lama de Mudo, le label. The person known as the Lao Lama. Et donc, la connue comme not la I am about to die. Et donc, il raconte l'histoire pas comme je vais bientôt mourir. But he said there was no. But, but he said I didn't know anything about emptiness. Meaning, in that life, up to the age of eight, he'd heard no teachings yet. But there was no fear. So this is an interesting point. Fear. People often. People often in the West talk about where's fear in the list of all the different. Mental, you know, states of mind that we learn in low rig. It doesn't have its. It doesn't have its separate status. Because fear is the character, the nature, the character, the nature, and the nature of all the delusions. In particular, the root delusion. Et en de la delusion so, you know, I think we call, I don't know, I, I, people, I forget, but wasn't it Mr. One of those scientists who came up with a concept called instinct for survival or something? You know, with, this is how we've identified, but we're looking at animals and humans. Et donc, qu'on identifie chez les humains et les animaux. When we're attacked or offended. Et comme étant ce qui survient quand on est attaqué. Fear, est, fear and panic rise up, don't they? Qu'on est, qu est attaqué et donc il y a une peur, une panique qui s'élève. Well, Buddha would call that ego grasping, bah, the Buddha root delusion. On appellerait ça saisie de l'ego, la délusion racine. This root delusion, ego grasping, which is the assumption beneath attachment and all the others. <coughs> It's just assumed. We live at the level of the voices of it. So the ego grasping itself is like a sleeping lion. And it will arise strongly. It will arise strongly, the ego grasping, <coughs> when we're really seriously offended or attacked. <coughs> Now, our view in the West is, our view in science, because we do observe animals and humans have this response. So our analysis of that, our analysis of that, is you need it in order to know what to do. So the assumption in that view would be that if Lama Zopa didn't have Have instinct for survival and fear, he would just sink to the bottom of the river and go, Oh, well, I'm drowning. What the hell? <laughs> no! If you had observed that event, You would have seen a little boy's head pop up for air. But if you'd seen his eyes, if you'd seen his eyes and observed his mind, and he said it, 
you would have observed that there was no fear. He was dealing with the situation in the best way he could, with his conditions. In other words, it's absurd to think you've got to have fear to know how to solve, to solve the problem of drowning. You don't need fear. That gets in the way. You need intelligence. Et en d'autres mots, il est absurde de penser qu'on pourrait avoir absolument besoin de la peur et afin de pouvoir se sauver dans une situation où on est en train de se noyer. Non, on pas, vous n'avez pas besoin de peur, vous avez besoin d'intelligence. So, as, is, as this is happening, et donc, et alors que ceci est en train it de occurred de... to him. Et, et il lui est survenu la pensée. Looks like I'm dying. Il, il semble que je vais bientôt mourir. The person known as the loud alarm is about to die. La personne connue est comme étant le lama d'Aouno et va bientôt mourir. And his mind was peaceful. Mais son esprit était paisible. Not panic stricken. Il n'était pas frappé de panique. Not attached. Il n'était pas attaché. This is shocking for us because in our culture, in our psychology, in our neuroscience, we don't posit such a possibility, which is why we really got to think about all this. This is what we study in high school. Et ça c'est choquant pour nous parce que dans notre culture, eh bien, et on ne euh, on ne n'affirme pas l'existence d'un tel état. Et donc c'est pour ça qu'il nous faut, eh bien, faire tout ce travail au niveau de l'école secondaire. So if he had drowned, parce que s'il s'était noyé, he would have died peacefully. Il serait mort paisiblement. Because parce que if he had clearly, this is the, the this is the proof he had realized emptiness. Et, et, et clairement, en fait, c'est la preuve qu'il avait déjà réalisé la vacuité. And in fact, he'd been recognized as the, well, by the these lamas in their divinations that he was the reincarnation of this great yogi in the past who had died as a great tantric yogi with complete control and chosen his next rebirth. That's the assumption here, you know. So he knew it from past life. And once you realize emptiness, you can never lose it. Et, et effectivement, eh ben lui, dans son cas, il avait été reconnu comme la réincarnation du, Lamudo, la, du Lama Dabudo, et donc ce qui euh, sous-entend ben, qu'il avait été dans sa vie avant le Lama Dabudo, qui était un grand yogi tantrique, euh, qui avait un contrôle total sur tout le processus de la mort, qui avait pu choisir sa renaissance, etc. Donc évidemment, le présupposé, quand on raconte toute cette histoire, c'est que, et ben, puisqu'il était, euh, il il était la réincarnation de Lama Dabudo, il avait déjà réalisé la vacuité dans sa vie d'avant, et une fois que vous avez la réalisation de la vacuité, vous ne pouvez plus la perdre. Salam Zerba says, when you, the, for the great yogis, the, the, the lesser of the great yogis, when they first realize emptiness, the lesser of the great yogis who first realize emptiness, oh, yeah. Sorry. lesser, yeah. not more of, less than, the, the slightly less than the best great yogis. Okay. Just say my, can you hear my words? Uh, Rumache uh, is talking about, I'm about to now tell you about the responses of the yogis who realize emptiness. So there's two kinds. One is the lesser ones, one is the better ones. Okay. Well, that's for you to know, just to explain my story, but never mind, tell them. Well, uh, Too late. It, uh, say it. But so he was. No, no, darling, I'm not talking about Lama Zopa. I'm not discussing Lama Zopa now. Full stop, close the page, next page. We're now going back to Lama Zopa, he's describing what it's like when the yogis realize emptiness. Donc maintenant, on en revient à Lama Zopa. Il nous décrit ce, comment c'est quand un grand yogi réalise la vacuité. He says, the, 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 nearly the best yogis, Donc, les their response, when they see for the first time the absence of the fantasy I they believed in since beginningless time, the fear is so tremendous. Much more intense than the, than the, the most powerful fear of the usual fear of the eye disappearing. Or the eye being threatened. Like it doesn't last. It doesn't last. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Thank you. It doesn't last because then they, you know, then they have bliss. <laughs> when they realize there's no I. But the greatest yogis, the greatest yogis, they have complete bliss. When they realize the I they thought was there could never be, can never be, and isn't. Mm. So in general, Rumi says, when you like, if you have a sense, sometimes in meditation you get a quick flash of fear about no I. Don't resist it. Don't resist it. En général, et Rinpoche dit que si en méditation vous avez un petit flash qu'il n'y a pas de et ben, ce qu'il faut faire à ce moment-là, c'est de ne pas résister à ça. Because you can never disappear. The fear has no basis in reality whatsoever. So it's lunchtime now. 
So see if you can discuss this in your little groups. See anything in this you can discuss? Et donc, euh, voyez s'il y a quoi que ce soit dans tout ça que vous puissiez discuter dans vos mm. petits groupes de discussion mm. tout à l'heure. Think about lunch is empty. Et pensez au déjeuner comme étant vide. No intrinsic nature. Il n'y a pas de, de nature intrinsèque. Nothing from its own side. Il n'existe pas de son propre. So the subtlest meaning. Donc ça, c'est la signification merely labeled, subtile, simplement, merely labeled, simplement coming from our mind. There is a basis there. Il y a une base qui est là. There is a basis. Il y a une base. Those vegetables and things. Mm. But our mind projects onto it. There is a basis, that stuff there in the plate. You know? But our mind projects everything onto it. Even calling it food is a projection. Because we're so familiar with calling it all these things. We forget that we made it up. One lama said that we're like children who draw a lion... Un lama est dit que nous sommes comme un enfant qui a dessiné un lion. And then become afraid of it. Et puis qui ensuite, eh bien, on a peur. That's how we live in samsara. C'est comme ça que nous vivons dans samsara. That's what Buddha says. C'est ce que dit Buddha. Think of food like that. Donc, then, does, then imagine it's full of the, 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 all the uh, qualities of enlightened body, speech, and mind. Oh, ma hong, oh, ma hong, melting into it. Et ensuite, imaginez qu'elle est remplie de toutes les qualités du corps, de la parole et d'esprit éveillé. Donc, oh, ma hong, oh, ma hong, ma hong. Turning into transcendental nectar. Dissolve dans cette nourriture. Big as the universe. Transforme en un nectar transcendental. Big as the universe. Plus grand que l'univers. And then we think of all the gurus and the buddhas and the bodhisattvas and all the sentient beings of all the realms of existence. And then we think of all them experiencing the joy of receiving it. Lama Sangi Lama Cho Deja Nama Gedon Te Kongi Jepo Lama Te Lama Nam La Cho Pa Bu Okay, and then enjoy your lunch. Must enjoy your lunch. And delight in all the kind people who made it. And see you at Katra. Eh? Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you.